that as you look at yourself, look at your goals and dreams, here's what I'm suggesting to you. Things have changed. Nobody will argue with you on that. You take a vote, everybody will say things have changed. We're going from brick and mortar to click and order. Majority of corporations, they have people working from home. They're not, never going to go back to renting those, those large buildings, those large shopping malls. Many of those will be used for other purposes. It's a different place. We've gone, as I say, constantly from brick and mortar to click and order. So now you have the ability to use your ability to communicate. And if you're not good at it, learn, invest in yourself. That's what I did. Things have changed. I want you to write this down. Make the change work for you. Make it work for you. A lot of people say, oh, I'm waiting on a stimulus check. Oh, whew. oh they, they're playing politics with the stimulus check. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. It's taxpayers' dollars. Okay. But make this change that has taken place work for you. Find a way to create something that's you that won't put you in this situation again. Find some way that you can leverage your knowledge, your experience, that you can begin to look at controlling your own personal economy and that you're not at the effect of what the government does or what's going on in DC, or what's going on in the White House, that you control what's going on in your house. You got greatness in you. You can do more, but we've been programmed, we've been schooled it's, it's no accident that, that we think in a limited way because we have not been trained to be entrepreneurial in our thinking. We've been groomed. Manufacturers have groomed educational systems to prepare people to work on jobs. And now we are at the end of work. Now, the time that you can go to college and graduate and get a job and work 40 years, that day is gone. Now, you have to find a way in this new economy to work for you. And I know you can do this. I'm 75. You will not find me at one of these large grocery stores that's about to close down uh, being a greeter. Why? Because I'm expanding my knowledge, my abilities and skills. I will not be like one of my classmates that I graduated with from Booker T. Washington High School in, in 1963. He said, man, I see you all over the internet. Man, you, you're training speakers, you, you're you speaking, you look real good, you look like kid from house party, kid in play. Man, you're doing it. And I said, what are you doing? He said, oh man, I've lived my life. I say, excuse me? Am I talking to a ghost on the other end of the phone? We both are 75. You're smart, man. I used to copy off your paper. That's how I got out of Booker T. Washington High School. You're a smart dude. You've always been smart. I admired you for the fact that you always got A's. And I got D's. I never had an A or a B in my life when I was in school. That's why I sat as close to you as I could. People probably thought we were dating. <laughs> And he said, oh, I'm through. I have lived my life. Do you know how many people, and I know you know some, they have lived their lives. They're not living a life of contribution. Mm -hmm. That if they died now, the conversations, the stories about them would end probably in a week or two weeks. We were brought here to do something. God had a lot of choices. You were chosen one out of 400 million sperm. Think about that. One out of 400 million sperm. There's something. Mm. His name, hey, his, hey, his name is Marvin. They're gonna call, they're gonna nickname and call him Papa Skeeter. But that one, he will be named Marvin. He, he yeah, he got some. Yeah, they can call him Papa Skeeter, but Papa Skeeter, you bad dudes. He's going to do some good stuff down there. Oh, hmm. Ah, yes. Yes. 
Her name is Ayana, Ayana Najuma Olujimi. That's what they will name her. Beautiful flower, abounding in joy. Yes, her father's name will be Les and mother's name Francie. Mmm, she gonna be something special, yeah. Hey, you were chosen to do great things, to grow, do the greater work. Think about this. this, listen, this is no accident of uh, being here and being here at this point in time. You still breathing? There's work for you to do. There's work for you to do. And so find ways to make this time and the changes work for you. Things have changed. So I'm learning the computer. I brought myself on. I used to have to have help and assistance to bring myself on. I make it a point, write this down. Make it a point to learn something today that you did not know yesterday. Do that and I'm telling you, life will just change. And, and the more you do that at learning and, and going to bed smarter than you brought in the morning, going to bed smarter will make you less dependent on others. I had got, I got angry at one of my daughters. I was asking her to do something for me and, and she didn't do it. And finally I said, why won't you at, do what I need you to do? I need your help on something. And she said, you act like your children owe you something. Whoa. First I got mad. Then I thought, no. She doesn't owe me anything, nor my my children. No. Yes, I paid for her to go through Spelman College, but she don't owe me nothing. Guess what? I figured out how to do it without her. And, but it also served me notice. The Bible says once a man, twice a child. So I said, I've got to take care of the old man in me because my kids don't owe me nothing. So. I better be wise, watch as well as pray and exercise and be selected with my choices and my eating and, and thinking, keep my mind sharp, read and, and doing a variety of things so that I don't end up with Alzheimer's or dementia. Be actively engaged in life because mama used to say, if you don't use it, you lose it. It takes longer to wear out than to rust out. This is the time to be engaged in life not being a witness, not just listening to all the statistics on the, the spreading of the coronavirus. You want to be concerned and stay out of harm's way, but not consumed with the statistics and, and hoping that you're not in the number. Just stay a proper distance from people. Be mindful. Be concerned, but not consumed. And live and maximize the available time that you have on the planet to do some other stuff. My goal is to finish strong. I haven't done my best stuff yet. Are you kidding me? No. He's old. I've lived my life. Are you 75? You've lived your life? Come on. Come on. Probably if he died now, they have to do a GoFundMe to bury his behind. No, this thing called life Herein my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. That, that we are here to bear much fruit. To do the greater work. Because we can. To, to leave a legacy. A good man leaves a legacy for his children and his children's children. And so when you look at yourself, look at your goals, look at your dreams, make what's going on work for you. Look for the possibilities. Don't depend on the government. If they come through, fine. If you have a great inheritance, fine. If people will come to your rescue, your children be volunteered to work and take care of you, fine. But if that doesn't happen, I love the song, Mama may have, Papa may have, but God bless the child who has us all. If something happened to me and I couldn't take care of myself, I know one of my sons, will he wipe my behind? No, he'll, he'll write a rap song about it. <laughs> and then I got a daughter, she will pray for it. I got two that will pray for it, but they ain't going to wipe it down. You got to know who's going to wipe your behind. I, I hate to go there. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, will I go be able to stay with them? Uh, I, I got two of them that I can stay for about two or three weeks, and then they can say, you know what, Daddy? Mm, I think you want out your welcome. You talking to yourself and changing my stuff around up in here, up in here. I like the shades being down. You like the shades being up. This is my house. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know, when you get in a position, you can find out a lot of folks based upon how they treat you when you can move around. But if you, if your stuff start declining and you have to depend upon people, that's, that, that's you start getting on their last nerve, they, they start telling you stuff, start recalling stuff. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, where your fans now? Mm-hmm. Who love the motivator? Yeah, you spend all that time trying to have a dinner with you, and they come up. Oh, excuse me, I hate to interrupt you, and I wanted to say to them, then why don't you go sit your behind down? And let me have dinner with my father. And you say, Oh, excuse me. Yes, I, I, I'd love to. Yes, I'll, I'll sign it. Do you remember that? Couldn't even have dinner with you without being interrupted. Somebody try. May I have your autograph, please? Why don't you autograph your behind over there someplace? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Where are they now? Mm hmm. You want to call one of them to come over and change the bed, change the sheets? <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> When I had sciatica pain and I couldn't pick up my body weight and I needed help to get in the bathtub, out of the bathtub and get in a wheelchair to be wheeled through the airport, that was a humiliating time for me and I'm wondering, God, will I ever be able to stand up? Whew. And fortunately, because of God's grace and mercy, because of his prayers, he said, I'm going to give you another shot because I'm trying to make a deal. I said, you know what? Listen, Lord, I know I've prayed in the past and told you I was going to increase my tithes by 35%. I know I promised you I was going to serve you. You think Paul worked for you? You ain't seen nothing yet. If you could just help this pain go away, if you could help me stand up and hold a microphone, let me tell you something. I'll serve you. I'll motivate and inspire your peoples. <laughs> You're having too much fun. Hello? <laughs> Listen. Do something that's you. People say, boy, you look young. You don't look 75. I know. If you spend 40 to 50 hours a week doing something that's not you, it will age you. It will age you. I have people come up to me, Mr. Brown, I've been listening to you since I was a little boy. And I say, is that right? <laughs> Then that makes me 150. <laughs> I'm telling you. People look like they're 80 and 90 years old. One foot on a banana peel and the other one in the graveyard. Do something that's you. There is no duplicate in life. Do something that's you. It will keep you young and vibrant. Be engaged. It's some truth in. It takes longer to wear out than to rust out. And most people, they rust out because they're doing stuff that's not them. It ages you. They're doing stuff that's not them. This stresses them out. They're doing stuff that's not them. It drives your blood pressure high. It's doing stuff that's not them. It turns your hair gray. I'm reading an article called, Is Your Job Killing You? Mm. Let's imagine. Going to a job that's killing you, and at the same time, you hope you don't get fired. Why? Because it pays the bills. But you know what? There's some of you listening to me right now. Say, Les, you talking to me. Hey, Les, I know what you're talking about. Going to a job that just pay the bills is not enough. 
I want to do something. That's me. And you owe that to yourself. You're made in the likeness and image of God. You've been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. But you've got to be willing to step up. You've got to be willing to reinvent yourself. You've got to be willing to take a chance on you, to bet on you. You've got to be willing to restructure your life. You've got to be willing to do something that you, you've got to be willing to chase your passion and not a pension. You've got greatness in you. But the reason I say this over and over and over again, they don't tell us this. Let's get a good education and things that work out just fine. Is that right? I don't think so. Things have changed. Take the time for quiet listening. In every area of your life, I, I did something the other day and I asked myself, do I need to still do this? You know how many things we just take on out of habit? And we really don't need to be doing that. Why? It's somebody else's stuff. I sent out a resignation letter. Grandfather's listening to me. I'm a grandfather and great-grandfather. I, I sent out a resignation number, a letter. I, I resigned from being Mr. ATM. Hmm, I resigned. They rejected my resignation letter and I sent them back another one. And then I block my telephone. Hmm. Hmm. You know what this is? The world's smallest violin playing the world's saddest song. I feel lonely whenever you are around. You can't reach me anymore. <laughs> oh, he's on fire. 